What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Chin Vlog. Uh, I've just come out of the restaurant today. Uh, just having a look round and putting Rach in charge has helped no end if I'm honest. Been brilliant. Um, yeah, take, I'll be honest, at the moment it's given me more work to do. Um, that's because, in terms of policies and things like that, because it's been me. You know, if something happens, it's on my head. But now she's GM, it's going to be on her head. So policies and stuff need to be in place, which is giving me more work to do. But at the same time, it's I can see the benefit in what's going to happen later on. I just really, really excited about what's going to happen now. Um, yes, yeah, done an amazing job. Uh, with Adam in the kitchen, leading the kitchen, uh, up the front, it's going to be fucking amazing. Uh, really let me focus on getting a second place and we're going to be doing street food so there's no conflict of interest. So one in mind head that does the street food, that one there um, that obviously does the takeaway, a uh, Chinese takeaway, which is what I'm really, really excited about the street food again. I just, I just loved it. I love it. I mean, it's just, it's just brilliant. The the food is just. I know I say it all the time, but it's it's honestly next level. We we get people say it constantly as well, and then and <clears throat> there is a bit the effect of people just obviously just saying it. But when you have people booking holidays around coming to eat at yours, that's when you realise you've got something special. And that's gone now, obviously, because of COVID. <clears throat> Spices and stuff became scarce. But let's uh, open back up in mine head. Well, not back up. Let's open up one in mine head. And the uh, thing is just finding a place. I can't I can just open a place up because it's one in, one out in terms of food. Like I said before, even if I did try that, the council around here aren't the most ethnically conscientious I should say um, so yeah I'm just looking for a place to open and then maybe busy uh, sorry not busy quiet periods that's where we run cookery lessons from so we don't open up say Monday to Thursday and just open up for the weekends and do cookery courses on the weekdays most people are free weekends, but at the same time, I think a lot of people would book holiday time to come down to learn to cook directly from mum, especially. <clears throat> mum's got a bit of a cult following, <laughs> for good reason. We've all we all know mum. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's brilliant. Really, like features. I wasn't vlogging at this time um, because there was so much going on like at the beginning of the year and I wasn't drinking so I didn't really have the energy to um, vlog whereas I'm having no withdrawal symptoms this time whatsoever it's just easy finished my quarterlies so yeah lost my trailer four Oh yeah, so um, yeah, around sort of January, February time, I was thinking, can we even make it to May? Let alone be in a position where we're covering costs with a little bit on top that's allowed me to get, you know, I think I've spent nearly four grand on equipment. Brand new fridge. Uh, we needed a dishwasher for when the restaurant opens back up again. Before we were doing it by hand, just so it's just not easy. Plan to have more seating. It's, so the restaurant itself can easily fit between 50 and 60 covers. We're running out of 30 because we wanted it to be more about the experience, and so the food was a bit more, you know, expensive. Um, the wine was high quality wine picked by professional sommeliers to match the food 
and people just didn't get it, I'll be honest. 20% of the population where we are understood what we were doing, the rest just wanted greasy Chinese. It's not the place for what we we're doing. So that's what we that's why I'm sticking with what I'm doing now rather than going back to the street food. And don't get me wrong, the street food did really well. It's just I can teach someone this Chinese food very quickly. Um, there's no sort of hanging about behind it. Uh, you know, there's no, I'd say, fear that if someone walks out, I now have to spend a year training them. It's like, if they're a chef, you'll be able to pick this up within two, three weeks. If you're not a chef, I can teach you how to do this in two months. So that's why I've kept this business model that we're doing now. And it also, like I said, means that um, it's a possi possibly a good way for me to say to someone, look, there's, there's a franchise opportunity here. You don't need to pay me anything for the franchise. You just take on the business itself. And what we do is we work it in terms of, we'll do a theoretical amount that you, you, you would have paid for it. Um, and then, a literal amount of what you pay me a month. So how a franchise would work and you'd get your stock from me. Um, so that's amazing in terms of uh, the scope of what that Chinese can now give me. As, and like I said in previous vlogs, it was kind of um, the kick in, the, the COVID was the kick in the teeth for me to actually get, turn around and actually start doing that. Uh, so I did, and you know what, probably one of the best moves I ever made, don't get me wrong, I say it all the time, and I always say I say it all the time, but I can't wait to have a street food place again, because it's just, well, oh, it's so, it's just so good, it really is good, um, but you know, I can't wait, I can't personally wait to sit down in that tech Chinese takeaway, or Chinese restaurant, and have a meal, I've never had a chance to sit somewhere I own and eat there. <coughs> it's always been in the kitchen when I eat my own food. I've never been able to sit down, have a drink, be one of those irritating customers. Um, and just be the boss of somewhere that is doing really well and I've been able to sit down and eat. In, that's kind of like a goal right there. Not once have I ever been able to do that. Not once. So I'm really happy about that. <coughs> well, I will be when I get to do it. <coughs> so yeah, we'll be open. The restaurant will be open in June, hopefully. Um, All I need to do, well, there's two reasons we're not opening straight away. One is we need to revamp it a little bit, not by much, but there's some things we need to get, like the floor needs to be redone. Um, the varnish was used before, but it wasn't meant for like, um, sort of commercial floor for a restaurant. So it's constantly sticky, no matter what you use to, um, clean it and we mop it every night and uh, it's just we found out that some some um, varnishes become sticky when uh, you use cleaning products on them so we're having to redo the floor before we open up because it just feels feels dirty even though it's clean and then <clears throat> what else Yeah, I need to get the furniture in. So, there's that, more furniture. Yeah, so there's more outlay there. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I spent loads and like I said, I've got a fridge, a dishwasher. Um, 
believe it or not, just random bits of equipment that's going to cost low. It just it all adds up, and you don't realise how much it adds up too. So specialist, like bins, for example, because you have to have a certain kind of bin. I bought two more bins, waste bins, so that is. They cost me with VAT about seventy quid. That's expensive for a bin. But like there is no other type that you can have. It's all very like you need to be getting the right stuff because if you're not, you're not being safe or healthy. Because all this stuff is tested for kitchen use. So you have to almost buy the high even though it's, it's high quality stuff, so you always have to buy the high quality stuff to make sure your kitchen is safe. Which is I, I is fully understandable but it's not it's not as worth the money they've just literally hiked up the price on it because they don't last much longer just the mechanisms are different they're slightly hidden so they're easier to clean and then for example food bins you can't just put you can't just use any plastic you have to use food safe bad plastic so I've had to, I've just bought three I think 38 litre flour bins um, they cost a hundred pound each. It's just never ending. And you know, I, I'm spending all this to keep my business safe and to make sure my staff have the proper equipment, which is the most important thing at the end of the day. It's just when you've only just start, started making money again and it's all flying out. It's a bit disheartening, but you know, it's for the better. Um, so yeah. Onwards and upwards. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, as always, stay safe. This is the way. Live long and fucking prosper. Stay classy, San Diego. Chin out.